Hello everyone, welcome to another week in our garden. Now this week we're at the front of the cottage and we're planting up the troughs and one of the hanging baskets ready for winter. Now we've actually done one to show you. This is one that we've already done. We've kept the cordy lines in, we like those so we're keeping those for a bit of height. I have root pruned them, which I'll show you how to do that in a moment. We've kept the ivies that we had in, we've just taken them out and replanted them. They're very pretty, so we'll keep those. Dianthus there. Then the pansies. The bellis. Very tough little plant that is. It's a lovely flower on it as well, like a little pom pom. And then the silver scenario to give it a bit of base colour at the back. Underneath, they've been planted with bulbs. We saved them over from last year, so we plant them again. And that will make a beautiful display. Now we'll go and plant a pot that we've got, and then the other trough that matches this one, and a hanging basket for you to see how we do them, okay? I've just emptied this old precast concrete tub. It's quite nice and put some stones in the bottom for the drainage. Half filled it, put some bulbs in, topped it up and put a cordyline in ready. Now the compost is just ordinary compost and I've had it about half a cup of Vitax Q4 to a five gallon bucket. And then I've put in a little bit of Poof and on meal as well, just to give it so it lasts longer the feed. So, because we don't want to look at this again till next summer. So, let's pop the plants in. We'll just pop, we'll have two dianthus in the centre, I think. There you go. Now all I'm going to do with this job is just fill it up with pansies. I'm just going to set the centre out so I get a balance. And then I'm going to put a ring around them. I think that would be nice like that. So we'll work it like that. Now the pansies, we actually purchased these from the garden centre and I was quite shocked with the prices. So from Next year onwards, we'll grow all these from seed and you can watch how we do them from seed and the dianthus. Okay, so I just put the rest in. Best if you just space them and make sure you don't get two same colour together. So we pop that one, that's a pretty one. Look. And that blue one there, the yellow one there, and the white one just there, I think. I think that'll look nice. Let's just pop those in. We will need a little bit of watering in the hot, dry weather that we're going to get through this winter. We don't seem to get winters now. Just keep an eye on it. If it looks a bit dry, give it a drink. But on a normal winter, they should look after themselves. So that one's in, that one's in, that one's to go in. And that one in there. That's nice there. Just brush those in. There's a bit of a bad leaf there, look, we'll take that off. So once the rock gets in, they'll rot right through in the damp weather. And then I pop this tie on just so we can get it. So I think that will do well. If we take that off, that will do nicely. Now, we've got the dwarf bulbs. They are uh, Narcissus daffodils, if you like. Very dwarf ones as well. The only trouble with the dwarf ones in pots against the wall, they tend to draw them a little bit. So the, what should be six inch might be 10 inch. That's one done. Let's go and look at doing the hanging basket got the hanging basket ready it's one that we've had for summer and we've taken the plants out 
Now you have to excuse the noise of the tractor, but they're actually ploughing the field just to the front of the cottons. Normally they're in the back, but today they're doing the front field. So a little bit of noise from the tractors, I do apologise if you just bear with me for that. It's actually moving away at the moment, so we'll be alright. Now we're going to do the basket. It's the same compost. It's one of the baskets we had on the front and we've taken the plants out and we're going to use it again for the winter baskets. It's the same sort of thing as the troughs. I don't put bulbs in baskets. They never seem to do very well in baskets. I've laid the plants out so you can see how I'm going to do it. If you always do that, then you've got some idea of when you get up on the top how you're going to do it. No cordy line in this one. We're using the silver scenario which will come right up and fill out. So let's get it planted. Same compost. Um, we'll start with the scenario not nicely into there. It's going to hang just above us here so it'll be viewed from both sides so we'll do a full round. We'll pop the ivies in next, not just on the sides. Just let them, three of them, so bearing in mind where your chains are. So we'll go here, quite deep. Spread them out and do that at the finish, I think. And the third one and pop that in. If it wants to go through the middle just let it go. It's no problem. Then we'll put the dianthus. I do believe the tractor is now turning. Pop dianthus in there. It looks a bit wrong but this will come up and fill out very quickly. Three dianthus, we'll only need two I think. Maybe put another one, yeah. We use the three. They're a little dry, so they're ready for a drink of water. Little bit of dead flower there. Look, we'll take that off. There you go. That one's broken. Look, let's take that. There you go. That's fine. And the third one, which is very, very dry. In it goes, nice and deep. So they're nice and firm. The boot, a bit of wind it in these, so the better they're planted a little deeper. And now we just need to put the pansies around. We've got six, so we go two, four, six. The broken flower there, not so we take that off. Just be aware there could be some seed heads on them, so take those off as you go. Looks a little bit tight, but they'll soon sort themselves out. There you go. See, this, this one's finished, so we take that one in. There you go. Another one there. We'll put the blue one there so we don't finish up with two blues and two yellows together. And this one got a pretty face on it. Pop that in there. There you go. Make sure everything's stood up. And then the last one in here. If we can get it in, yes we can. There you go. That's nicely in now. Remember to firm your baskets well down because it will, as they're hanging up there, a little bit of winter wind that will soon blow them loose. It's nice and tight. And so, so we put the chain on. Get that hung. I will just hold it for a short while because I want to give it a good watering before I put it up, say it's lifting the can right up. So that's the hanging basket done. This is the next plant we're going to do. 
as you can see I've put the bulbs in these are all the bulbs that we saved from last year we keep them in this crate once we take change over to summer bedding and then bring them back as they start to grow as you can see so that's those in I should just top the compost up and then I'll show you how we're going to put them together there you go that's the compost in don't fill it right to the top because time for all the plants in the compost will be spilling over keep it as clean as we can obviously now we're going to use cordylines now these are the cordylines that we've had in here all summer planted them last winter if you can remember and we want to keep them because they look quite pretty but the trouble being on cordylines if we just left them in all the time they would soon fill this container up with roots as you can see they're very strong rooted so i'm going to root prune it now i'm going to clean it a little by popping it into this bag and giving it a, a good shake to get some of the compost off there you go you see just take it some of it off so we can see the roots that's not a root okay while you're doing this always keep looking out for like little white maggots they are vine weevil grubs if you see any of those just pinch them likewise if you see a black ugly looking beetle claws on the front that's the wine weevil itself now i haven't seen any at all while we've been doing these we're very lucky right so we just take that compost off i'm doing it in a bag you don't want too much mess that's it look now what we do to root prune it get the second tiers and i'm just going to take these long roots off so it's got to grow some new roots it'll soon grow in there because it's very greedy plants just take some of those roots off like that so that's root prune well now it is and we can dig a hole and put that in and it'll just steady its growth down a little bit and stop it from filling up the container with its roots gives the other plants a chance i'll just do the other one and then we can plant them both and it is same again we'll just pop it in there and just shaking down or a hair down whatever not too much it's just to steady it a bit there's some very old roots there and then secateurs out the pocket cut them off That'll do nicely. So we'll get these planted. When I put the bulbs in, I left two spaces. I put the bulbs around these two spaces because I knew the quarter lines were coming. So we just part that soil down. You see, there's no bulbs there to, to get in the way. Just push it about. And then we can pop, oops, pop that in. A little bit deeper than that, so we need to go around. That's it. Draws the back of the container, don't want that angle, and then bring the compost back onto the roots. There's a little bit of feed in this container in this compost so they'll soon get going again. Likewise with this one. All the way. Not quite so deep, but a bit wider this one. And then it goes to the back of it again quite firm that's those back in root pruned and returned to more or less the same position it was but they have got fresh compost we'll do the same sort of layout as we did the basket and the other container so it all is on balance so those will go out there looks a bit odd big small but that'll be soon appear. and then 
there I think that's back a little that's better and we'll go there and then we'll put the bellies in between and then the pans is around so I'll plant these and see how we get on It's very noisy around here today. We have trains and tractors and there's two gentlemen next door strimming. Everybody's come out to play today. No cockerels though today. Oh, it's nice that then, huh? That looks nice. If these were any taller they, when you buy them, just nip the tops out, I'll still sort of keep going straight up and then have a yellow flower. The ivies that we're taking out, so what we're going to do is just just take those off, just to tidy them up a little. If you don't take them off, you'll never get them planted again. And this is a nice big one, so we'll have this one in the middle. Just deep enough so you don't disturb those bulbs and then compost around. They'll soon turn. We might just take these two long ones off, look. three, four even. Now those of us who take cuttings, there's cuttings there if we need them loads of them. If you're doing these, put about four or five to a pot and they make a good pot for them. But today, we're not doing them today. We have this one here, shall we? No need to root prune that one, it's a bit shorter on the root. That's fine. Let's come over the corner if you want. Maybe just take that one off lot that's a bit too long. And then the other big one in that corner might need a bit of pruning. No, it's fine. I can sit lovely on that corner. Nice and in. Now we'll put the ballas in. Four of them. So we do one. Who easily grown from seed will do these things seeds. Three, four, pop those in. No need to pop them in as tight as what we did for the basket plants because these are not going to blow back. That's those four in, and now we just need to put the pansies around. So we'll start this then, we'll start with the blue. That's nice. We go one, two, we go one, three, three, one again. Then if we need to put one in there, we can at the end. Two and the red. red. We we'll have this nice orange one just here. Yeah. That flower's finished. In there it goes. They will stretch up a bit as they go down, they're not going to stay that small. And then a yellow thing in there. That's nice. And then a blue, a blue with the face in there, smiling that one. There you are. Now we've planted it up and cleaned up a little, so we'll give it a drink. We can have the whole of this can. 
compost wasn't awfully dry but they'll settle better and push the air out settle things down Just let it wash over the container as well to wash any loose peat off. Now we just need to release the cordy lines and let it all grow, okay? So we just take those off now. There you are. Now the cordy lines look a bit big as they are now. But if you imagine this scenario will come right up to oh, 12 inch easy. Dianthus will put on a spurt, not so much now but in the spring. The bellis will fill out and be flowering most of the winter. The pansies will flower for a little while, they'll put quite a bit of growth on and then they'll shut down for the bad winter and then start again in the spring so it'll be a nice display. That's the hanging basket done and the troughs for the front of the coffin. That's the smaller of the two troughs with the two lions guarded. The larger of the two troughs just needs a little time just to fill up now and they'll be fine. This is the old concrete plant that we have at the front. Hello there. Friday today. Wonderful day. Cold nights, warm days. Autumn's upon us. Now I've been given some kale plants, just six. So I'm going to pop those in down here. And then I'm going to pop our own January king cabbages in. These will be for next year's crop so we're putting them in next year's brassica bed so I'm putting them in the fourth tunnel the last plant of the kale in and then we'll pop the January kings in. I'm just alternating them a little bit because these will be gone by the time we get round to wanting the soil in the spring. The soil is very, very wet. It's been raining a lot in the night. Just pop that straight in. Nice and firm, remember, because they're brackets. I have to do it with the child, not putting my hands into that. It's very, very sticky. It's prepared land, not dug deep, because we need this ground firm for next year's brassica. It's been well lined and that will settle down nice and tight now we're putting them into one of the tunnels again now for the winter tunnels i put this extra wire in just to take a bit of the support if we do get any snow or anything this will just help support the the mesh on top obviously if you get a lot of snow i should come and knock the snow off I should fetch the cabbages and we'll put the cabbages in that side. And there's my January kings. I've had them ready for quite some time while I've been getting this bed ready. So they're very they're ready to go. Not too deep, remember. You see they're ready, well ready. Pop it in. Now we've got to really get this as tight as possibly can. With the ground being so wet. I'm just pushing it down with the with the trowel. If I put my hands in there, I'll never get that. Just square up. That is nice and tight. This soil will set solid when it dries out a little bit. And that'll hold them fine. Then we do the same again around here somewhere. I think. Just there. them in these pots for as long as I can they just while I was preparing the bed I've been waiting for the weather really they'll be fine nice and firm
I'll finish off and then show you the bed when we've pinned the tunnel back down on top of it okay this is the last one we're going to pop in after this back January King 3 that's the corner I just found the label January King 3 push them in tight a little bit there you are then that's uh, a few KO that I didn't know I was getting but I'll accept it it's uh, if we don't eat it the chickens absolutely love it and the January Kings are now in and we put the net on it's a good job because the butterflies are are about again today just keeps butterflies off it'd be nice now remember if you putting them in now don't give them any feed with nitrogen in if you do they'll get on give a lot of growth and when the weather changes it'll be soft growth and it'll be wiped out of the first frost another little job to do on the celeriac so I'll show you that as we go up we're going to remove some of the outer leaves so that the root will swell up a little it does help them swell towards the autumn all these off here I've also taken a few of the outer leaves off the swedes that were getting a bit damaged these are what we do look we just take these that have fallen mainly just strip them off you see another one there just strip them off they'll be fine and that will help the these roots swell up I've done all those now and we just hope we get some nice rain or more rain that will swell them up right we're up at the brussel patch the brassica bed for this year and there's only about the, br the brussels left in them now I've taken one of the tunnels off unfortunately we've got white fly in them so I've had to take them off and then I'll get some soap on them, try and wash them out. I'm going to take all the tops off the tunnels now and I'll show you this next week all finished. Loads of brussels on them. Brussels are fine. We might even harvest a few next week, I think. The chickens have come down to give me a hand. Now it's Friday today. We've had a good week. We've got some hanging baskets done. Do have a go at doing some hanging baskets. You can do them with heathers, etc. Don't forget, but don't forget to put ericaceous compost in them. Get some beautiful heathers that will flower through the winter. And they look very nice. Now that'll be about it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm looking down because the chickens are pecking at some cabbages that I put in late that would go for late autumn so I don't think there'll be any left now doing that so that'll be about it for this week I hope you've enjoyed it many thanks to those people who have subscribed we do appreciate it and hopefully we'll see you next week bye now